Well, hello, everybody. This is Father Chris Alar. I'm coming to you from Belfast, Northern Ireland. I was just in uh, Dublin, Ireland earlier, and we're going across the UK. I'll be in London and spreading the message of divine mercy and the rosary. So it's an honor to be with you, talking to you about something very important, not just the rosary, but the rosary confraternity. Um, so a little bit about this. Let's start with, um, most importantly, what the rosary is. Okay, the rosary is actually comes from the word rosarium, um, and that means a crown of roses. And so we all know that tradition says that Our Lady gave the rosary to St. Dominic um, in an apparition in 1214. Um, and then in the 16th century, the rosary was developed more into the common way we know it today with the 15 mysteries. But then it was added to, and a lot of people didn't like this, um, by John Paul, who added the five mysteries of light, the, the luminous mysteries to the rosary. But it makes sense. And let me tell you really quickly why. Because we have the set of rosaries that refer to our Lord's birth. This is the joyful mysteries. We have the set of mysteries that refer to our Lord's death. This is the sorrowful mysteries. And we have the mysteries that refer to his resurrection. This is the glorious mysteries. But what was missing was the luminous mysteries about his life. Uh, I should say what was missing were the mysteries about his life. And that is the luminous mysteries. So, um, you know, we don't want to um, not see some value to this, um, to these sets of mysteries. Now, also don't look at the rosary as vain, repetitious prayer. It's not a bunch of Hail Marys. These are just background music, if you've heard me say in the past. But meditation on the rosary is meditation on scriptural mysteries. They're all there. And so we have to understand the value here. And I wanted to tell, first of all, about what we're celebrating today. Um, you know, um, it, it, the, the mystery of the rosary goes back far, but, but also there's the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, um, which we celebrate today. And it was first known as Our Lady of Victory, which my football coach, when I played football in high school, would always scream at us to pray to Our Lady of Victory. I didn't know the story behind it. Um, but anyway, it's the anniversary of the victory of the Christians over the Ottoman Navy at Lepanto. This was on in October, the first week of October, 1571. And so the Turks, just real brief, I want to tell you about this. The Turks expanded their empire um, all the way west on land, and they were asserting their naval power in the Mediterranean. And so they brought a large portion of our divided Christian world under Islamic law. And that was problematic. And we're seeing this again today. So this is why we need to pray the rosary again, like they did back in the 1500s. But basically what happened is three Catholic powers, uh, Genoa, Spain, and the Papal States, um, or they say Genoa or Genoa, the Papal States and Spain, they formed an alliance um, and they called it the Holy League. I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch the Super Friends and it was the Justice League, but this is true. This was the Holy League and it defended all of Christian civilization against the Turk, the Turkish invasion. Um, and remember the catechism says we are allowed to act in self-defense. So on October 7th, on today's date, 1571, the crew members of more than 200 ships, uh, they prayed the rosary in preparation for the battle. And so did Christians all the way throughout Europe. They encouraged um, each other to pray. Pope Pius V encouraged them to pray, to gather in their churches. They were greatly outnumbered. Uh, they were outmanned. Um, only a miracle could really uh, save them. And... It did. Um, the Pope was was then so moved by this victory of faith uh, that he instituted a feast called Our Lady of Victory, and that has now become Our Lady of the Rosary. And so Pope Leo XIII, I'm going to read you his exact quote here. Let me look it up. And Pope Leo XIII said, This devotion, 
so great and so confident to the august queen of heaven has never shone forth with such brilliancy as when the militant church of god has seemed to be endangered by the violence of heresy you gotta love how leo the 13th told it as it was or by an intolerable moral corruption or by the attacks of powerful enemies this is why we need it today we're facing the same things so now if the ottomans had won there was obviously a real possibility that the an entire invasion of italy would have followed um you know that the ottoman sultan was already claiming to be emperor of the romans and it would have been total possession of rome and an end of christianity so sometimes um we gotta fight and uh but our way to fight today is not picking up swords it's picking up the rosary and <clears throat> so we may feel weakened weary sometimes um tired but you know the unity of praying the rosary together in a group brings us strength and it's spiritually united to each other um, to mary and to the whole heavenly court uh, just like uh, the amazing history of being united in praying the rosary back at lepanto um, and being united through uh, what we want to talk to you now about a confraternity that's just like what happened at lepanto so we really can tap into this unity uh, of Christians throughout the world uh, through a new growing interest um, that there is in this confraternity of the rosary. Uh, it's gonna be now put into many shrines, including our shrine, the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. We're working with SEMA. Uh, this is a group, uh, C-E-M-A, that stands for the Coalition of Eucharistic and Marian Apostolates. Uh, in fact, the Rosary Congress, which I work with, uh, with Kristen Bird, um, is a founding member of SEMA. So is MOM, which is the Mother of Mercy Messengers with Joan and Dave Maroney. They do great work, part of our apostolate here at the Marian Fathers. And according, we know, to tradition, St. Dominic, he also founded, people don't know this, an association of prayer to promote the Rosary. And this association of prayer was intended to be a, um, how would you say it, a way of passing on the spiritual weapon of the rosary. And this became universally described as the confraternity of the rosary. And so um, a couple years ago in 2021, it marked the 800th anniversary of the death of St. Dominic. Wow. Um, and so then there was another Dominican, Blessed Alan de la Roche, that reestablished this arch confraternity of the rosary. He did it way back in the 15th century. Um, and so this is important because Pope Leo XIII, who I've always said is my pick is the greatest pope we've ever had, um, he stated in his encyclical Ubi Priumum, this is a work of his, uh, and let me look up his quote. Um, he said, the members of the confraternity are the battalions who fight the battle of Christ. Yes. Armed with his sacred mysteries and under the banner and guidance of the heavenly queen, it is therefore desired that renewed zeal should be called forth in the founding, enlarging, and directing of these confraternities, not only by the sons of St. Dominic, but by all who are charged with the care of souls. I'll be honest with you, as Provincial Superior of the Marian Fathers, I am charged with the care of souls, and it's your soul that I'm caring for. I worry about, I pray for, and so I'm trying to get us together so that we can be um, a force uh, that will lead the grace to help the world today and us get to heaven. So why do you want to do this? All right, um, you know, uh, SEMA, this group that's bringing this to the shrine, this rosary confraternity, um, as a SEMA member, and there's other members too, like the Marian Devotional Movement, Dennis Gerard out of Canada does a great job in, in spearheading um, 
an expansion of the Rosary Confraternity. He's trying to take it to all the Marian shrines in the world. This is good. As I said, Mom, uh, the Mar Mother of Mercy Messengers, the Rosary Congress. And so this is important for all of us because members of the Rosary Confraternity promise to recite. And this is now we're talking you individually. Okay, now I'm not talking about just other groups. Now I'm talking about you individually. Okay. Um, members of the confraternity, yes, yes, you promise to recite a weekly rosary. Now, most of us should be doing this daily, uh, but it does not bind under the pain of sin. You are not committing sin if for some reason one week you do not pray the rosary. Now, there are several plenary and partial indulgences that you can get as being a member of the confraternity. Um, members will also, uh, and this is powerful because uh, we we benefit from the countless rosaries that are offered uh, for our intentions by other members throughout the world. And so this is the classic example, like being a member of the Association of Marian Helpers, that you pray for us, we pray for you. And this is powerful. So in, in addition um, to that, being an enrolled member, you can participate in all, not just the prayers, but the good works uh, that are performed by friars, nuns, sisters, and the laity of the Dominicans. Now, I was trained in seminary by the Dominicans, so you know that it's a good place. And so the Rosary Confraternity of the Dominicans um, is what this is all about. In fact, you can learn more. They publish an, um, um, a periodically called Light and Life. This was a, I think, bi-monthly newsletter of the Rosary Confraternity in the Western province. But basically, what do you got to do? People are going to be asking, Father, what do I need to do? Okay, it's very simple. Just have your names written in the register of the confraternity. And <clears throat> if possible, go to confession and communion and say the rosary on the day you are enrolled. Okay, so if possible, go to confession and communion and say the rosary the day you are enrolled. If that's not possible, that's okay, but just try um, have a, a rosary yourself. We should all have that and say the rosary, try to do, you know, every day, but if not, at least once a week and last, whenever possible, again, go to confession and communion uh, on the first, this time Sunday of every month. Uh, we know the first Fridays and the first Saturdays, but actually this is first Sundays, uh, to take place, um, in, in, in being active in the confraternity. You can also, uh, take part in rosary processions. But again, none of this binds under the pain of sin. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, you definitely want to participate and be part of this um, movement of prayer in the church because it's uniting pilgrims and shrines together. And we at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy want to be part of that. So the goal basically here as been stated, is to unify Eucharistic and Marian apostolates, which we're a part of, you're part of if you're a Marian helper, in order to magnify the efforts to basically rec reclaim families for Christ, um, our churches and our nations. So your family, your church, your nation, um, reclaim it. And we do it through the rosary. Um, but also, too, I want to mention that it's important because here at the Marian Fathers, this is also tied to Marian Consecration and Divine Mercy Sunday. Basically, the tying together to reclaim Christ in your church and your, in your nation is not just through the confraternity of the rosary, which is good, but also through Marian Consecration and Divine Mercy Sunday. So people say, Father, why are the Marians now adding the Rosary Confraternity? Because we already offer you Divine Mercy Sunday. We've already been bringing you Marian Consecration for years. And now it's time to complete it with the Confraternity of the Rosary. These are the three pillars of promotion. Um, again, the Rosary Confraternity, Marian Consecration, and Divine Mercy Sunday. And so we at the National Shrine, as other shrines are establishing rosary confraternities. As Pope Leo XIII told us, 
we hope to connect with each other through SEMA um, to help promote, from our end, Divine Mercy Sunday and Marian Consecration. We've already been doing this. Uh, you know, the best way is true devotion to Mary, uh, but we've also done 33 Days of Morning Glory, and, and, and I've done talks on it, so God bless you. Um, and finally, to finish, the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy um, is uniting with these other shrines, as I said, to participate, to now renew this confraternity that's been around for centuries. Um, and again, I said a second ago, it's the goal is to unite pilgrims all around the world and shrines all around the world together for the salvation of souls by Our Lady's fa favorite prayer, the rosary. Now, don't you want to be a part of that, right? The uniting of the rosary. So I finish with a couple quotes so there's an encyclical um, of Pope Leo XIII com uh, commending devotion to the rosary, Letitiae Sancte. And in it, I just want to read you a couple quotes because here's what Pope Leo XIII said, and let me read this. These advantages, as we may readily conceive, will be secured in a higher and fuller measure by those who band themselves together in the sacred confraternity of the rosary and who are thus more than others united by a special and brotherly bond of devotion to the Most Holy Virgin. Notice he says even more bonded to her. He goes on, they are, um, they are, are to speak, the battalions who fight the battle of Christ. I don't know about you, but that's me. Uh, and I want you to, to join us. Um, he goes on, armed with the sacred mysteries, and under the banner and guidance of the heavenly queen, how faithfully her intercession is exercised in response to the prayers, processions, and solemnities. Um, and this is written in the whole experience of the church, not less than in the splendor of the victory of Lepanto. What he's saying here is this is as great as the victory of Lepanto. Amazing. All right, that was paragraph 16. Now let me read you just briefly from paragraph 17. He said, it is therefore to be desired and renewed zeal um, that we should be called forth in the founding, enlarging, and directing of these confraternities. And that's what we're trying to do here. And that not only be the sons of St. Dominic, uh, to whom, by virtue of their order, a leading part of the apostolate, but by all who are charged with the care of souls, as I mentioned earlier, and notable in these places in which the confraternity has yet not been canonically established. And so we're wrapping up here, but basically the Rosary Confraternity, as Leo XIII stated, you know, he had an apostolic constitution on the confraternity. And reading you, I think this is ubi primum. Um, and this is his words. He says, whenever a person fulfills his obligation of reciting the rosary according to the rule of the confraternity, he includes in his intention all its members, and they in turn render him the same service many times over. So when you pray for the confraternity members, they pray for you. What a deal. Um, and so, you know, the bottom line is those, you know, those members also include the faithful departed. It's not just the living who enrolled during their life and so uh, and who continue to pray for us after death. So you get their prayers as well, all the members of the deceased that were confraternity members. And so we know that we are included in the prayers of countless members, uh, both living and deceased. And um, But sadly now, keep in mind, those who have already died, we cannot enroll them in the confraternity after they've died. Uh, but, uh, and that's okay. I mean, we, we, we still pray for them, but those who pray the rosary, uh, rosary regularly, it would really be good to enroll in the confraternity to gain additional spiritual benefits. Um, for every rosary you pray, why not get the benefits, even more benefits than you're getting now. And, um, so I'm going to summarize the benefits and then we're done. Uh, one. The first benefit that, and let me look these up the same exactly, the special protection of Mary, the mother of God. This is the first protection. 
the protection of Mary, the mother of God. Second, um, share in the prayer of countless thousands of members around the world, even after their death. So you're getting a share in the prayers of thousands of people around the world. Third, a share in the prayers, masses, and apostolic works of the entire Dominican order. So I've already mentioned all these three. I'm just summarizing. Fourth, the intercession of the entire heavenly court. Wow. And then fifth, a lot of plenary and partial indulgences, which you can look up, be summarized. Um, and so the information to be able to do this, Father Matthew's going to be telling you more about. Um, and uh, we hope that you'll join us. Uh, so for right now, the information there is on your screen, how to go ahead and enroll uh, to be able to become a part of this confraternity. It's an uh, awesome opportunity to put your rosary on uh, overdrive and to be able to uh, put your rosary on steroids because it does make it super powerful. The rosary already is powerful, but when united with so many other people, it even makes it more powerful. So God bless all of you. Thank you for joining us, for being Marian helpers. And this is just an extension of that. Our confraternity of the Immaculate Conception is part of our Association of Marian Helpers. And we love you to be part of that as well. But this is just another great way. So that you know what? When you pass on and meet our Lord, you'll never be able to say, I didn't know about all the ways that I could get grace. Because here you go. We're showing you one of the great ways that you can get grace. So, Almighty God, may he bless you and keep you abundantly in his mercy. And we bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.